Today's video is about immune complexes. Immune complexes are produced when antigen binds with antibody. This is a normal physiological response to get rid of unwanted antigens. These antigens could be environmental antigens or as a result of infections, for example, viral hepatitis or streptococcal infections or autoantigens in diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus. Inefficient clearance of immune complexes results in accumulation of the immune complexes in the body and then they might be deposited locally. For example, in case of farmer's lung, the inhaled antigens are results in the de deposition of immune complexes in the lungs and in systemically in case of systemic lupus erythematosus and nephritis. These deposited immune complexes locally or systemically may lead to inflammatory tissue damage and that is mediated by complement activation, neutrophil uh, attraction or chemotaxis that leads to damage locally and basophil degranulation and one of the mediators that has a very important role in this is histamine that causes vasodilation and that that helps in the deposition of immune complexes in the basement membrane of the vessels and the kidney glomeruli. Complement proteins have a imp very important role to play in the removal of the immune complexes but uh, to understand that first we have to understand the complement proteins as obsolence and its relationship to phagocytosis. The classical pathway of complement system is activated by immune complexes of IgM or IgG isotypes whereas the alternate pathway of the complement system is very well known as a pathway that is antibody independent but at times the immune complexes of IgG, IgA and IgE they tend to activate the alternate pathway. As a result the different complement proteins are activated in particular C3B, C4B, C3 IC3B, they act as obsonins and they coat the antigens. But there's a very interesting relationship between the obsonins and phagocytosis. If the antigens are not coated by antibodies or the complement proteins, the phagocytosis is quite weak. But if antigens are coated by immunoglobulins alone, for example IgG the phagocytosis is better and same is true for the complement proteins so C3B or C C4B when they coat the antigens the phagocytosis is similar to the uh, antibodies but interestingly when the antigens are coated by both the antibodies and the complement protein. So for example, if immunoglobulin G, C3B and IC3B, they coat the antigen at the same time, the phagocytosis is quite strong and excellent. Immune complex clearance is also termed as immune adherence. The immune complexes are normally kept small and soluble by classical complement pathway. But sometimes when there's persistence of the uh, unwanted antigen, it leads to larger immune complexes which are insoluble. And the alternate pathway has an important uh, function here. The C3B produced by the activation of uh, alternate pathway, it binds to the different epitopes of the antigen and results in the disruption of large immune complexes to small soluble complexes. It is then the red blood cells with their complement receptor 1 comes and uh, bind these uh, complement coated immune complexes. Red blood cells are normally uh, composed of around 700 complement receptor 1 and these red blood cells then take them to the spleen 
uh, where there are fixed tissue macrophages that will engulf the immune complexes. The red blood cells take them to the spleen and there the fixed tissue macrophages that have got the FC receptor and the complement receptor 1, they are going to take up these immune complexes and red blood cells move back to the circulation. During this process, the red blood cells sometimes lose their complement receptor 1 and in cases of persistent unwanted antigens, there is too much usage of uh, the movement of red blood cells to the spleen where fixed tissue macrophages take up the excess immune complexes that red blood cells start to lose their uh, receptors on their surface and gradually the immune cl clearance become inefficient and the complement proteins when they are used up constantly they also result in reduction of, of the complement levels in the blood as well. With inadequate removal of the immune complexes from the body results in their accumulation in the body. And then they start to get deposited in joints and results in arthritis or in the kidneys leading to nephritis and in the blood vessels they cause vasculitis. Why these tissues in particular? There is actually a couple of reasons that uh, explains why these immune complexes are deposited in kidneys, joints and blood vessels. There is negative charge of the kidney basement membrane and of the vascular basement membrane that attracts the uh, positively charged immune complexes. There is presence of complement receptor 1 on glomerular cells and synovial cells that attract immune complexes as well and high pressure at the time of ultrafiltration in the kidney glomerulus and in the uh, joints that leads to synovial fluid formation as well as the turbulence in the blood vessels also trigger the deposition of immune complexes in the blood vessels. In summary, immune complex formation is a normal response to get rid of the unwanted antigens. At times, the persistence of these antigens may lead to accumulation of immune complexes. The complement plays a vital role in preventing large insoluble immune complex formation as well as disrupting them to small soluble ones. Inefficient clearance results in the deposition of immune complexes to joints, kidney and blood vessels. Thanks for listening.